Up to this point, we've only been considering negative feedback systems, but what if we have a positive feedback system? How do we get the root focus for that? And so what we're gonna see is that this is actually the same thing as a negative feedback system that has a negative gain or a K value less than zero. And so we've also up to this point been saying for these negative feedback systems, let's consider it positive gain. So let's take a look at this simple negative feedback system. So notice I'm subtracting this feedback signal. So it's a negative feedback system, but I've made my gain negative. So I have that it's negative the magnitude of K times G of S. Well, what I can do is I can sort of split off that negative and I can think of it as being a separate negative one block, which I can then move past this pick off point. So when I do that, what I get is something that looks like this. So let's go ahead and sort of just copy the skeleton of that diagram there. And so what I get is I'm gonna have now just a magnitude of K times G of S here. This is going to be a negative H of S. And I'm gonna have a negative one block here that this goes into. And this is going to be our C of S and this is still being added and this is still being subtracted. So again, all I've done is I've sort of split off that negative sign with our, our gain. I've moved it past this pick off point, which means I have to put it in each of these two branches. So I've created that new negative one branch on the top and I've added a negative sign to this feedback form down here. So now what we see is I have this negative and negative. So the two negatives are of course going to make a positive so let's go ahead and update that to be a positive feedback system. And so actually, let me just modify this. So all I have to do is just get rid of this one and make this one a positive, uh, not get rid of it, but make it a positive like that. And so now we see we have a positive feedback system. And so what we're gonna to wanna to focus on is sort of this middle part here. So of course that negative one is going to affect our system, but ultimately it's just an overall gain after we've looked at sort of the more interesting part in the middle here. So let's just consider sort of what we'll call a quote unquote normal positive feedback system. So normal positive feedback system. And so all I'm gonna do is just drop that negative one block on the end, saying that we can easily account for that uh, sort of at a later point if we need to. So here we have our K G of S. So now we're saying that we're gonna let this be a positive gain and we have our H of S, which is inherently a positive feedback as well. So this is going to be our C of S. Um, so again, by normal, so let me restate this in case I was a little confusing earlier. Um, so instead of actually adjusting this system, what we're now considering is we have some positive gain K here but we also inherently just have a positive feedback loop. Okay, so we're gonna use sort of the same basic approach we did with our negative feedback system. So we can use our feedback form to simplify this block diagram. So our feedback form tells us that our T of S, our equivalent closed loop transfer function, is going to be one minus K G of S times H of S in the denominator, and in the numerator we just have K G of S. And so we're looking, in our, for our root locus, we're looking at our closed loop poles and how they vary as our gain is adjusted. So of course our pole information is coming from the denominator. So we can say our poles are go going to correspond to where we have our K G of S H of S equal to one. And so just like we did previously with our negative feedback, we can think about what this looks like in our complex plane. So if we say we have our complex plane, so this is our J omega axis, this is our sigma axis, our point one is going to be here. And so if we think about that in polar coordinates, that's going to be a magnitude of one and an angle of zero, or we could also think of it as a magnitude of 360 or a magnitude of negative 360 or some multiple of 360. So to sort of generalize then, we could say this is equal to one angle K, and so let's change that so it's not the same count variable. So let's say it's M times 360, where our M is just going to be equal to zero 
plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, and so on. So we're basically just saying that angle has to be some multiple of 360. And so what we notice here is we have the same magnitude requirement. So same magnitude requirement as our negative feedback system. But now we have a new angle requirement. And so all that comes from is the fact that we have positive feedback form. So that means we have a negative sign here instead of a positive sign so that we get a positive one instead of a negative one. Because remember our negative one was here. So of course that is going to have a different angle as we see in the S plane. So what we're going to look at, uh, well, so let me go ahead and put a reference here. So if you want to compare that to the notes where we looked at the requirements for our negative feedback system, you can look on page 7-6 in the notes. Um, and what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to see how this information changes those basic rules we had for sketching our root locus.